Hi, I'm David. And I'm Brittany. And this is our son Daniel. And this is our tiny house mansion. We wanted to give you a tour. This is our living room. Uh, we built it so that it could spaciously fit a lot of people. Uh, right now, it's still under construction. We have a partial couch, but we'd like to either have an L or a wraparound here. We put big windows right here in the living room so that while you're visiting, it won't feel uh, confined at all. This is a giant picture window, which is nice. Both of these windows uh, open to let a nice breeze through. So we can open them for some cross ventilation right here. The high ceiling in the living room makes it uh, not feel so tiny. Uh, having this high ceiling in here really helps people to feel like it's a lot more spacious in the house. So we stop the loft right over the kitchen. And then we have two small windows up here that just let a little bit extra light in and help it feel more like you're not really confined in this space. This is our wood stove. It's a nice small size and yet it's still big enough to fit decently sized logs in. The main reason for us getting this was because it had such a low clearance to the wall. We could put it so close and keep it out of the way. Then we have our nice spacious countertop. We make a lot of food. Food preparation is really important in a family and so we wanted to have countertop space, both sides of the sink, nice big sink, and still have an area to work on with the stove. In fact, we built this little slide out island so that if we need a little bit more countertop space, we can just slide this out, use it, and then once we're done, put it away. It's going to eventually have drawers in here, but right now, the three things we're working on in this house is the couches, the curtains, and the cabinets. We don't have any cabinetry yet, so it's currently very easy to reach in and get anything you want. We have a small countertop dishwasher, which is nice because we currently just use it every time we eat a meal and that's it. It runs on only 230 watts of electricity for a whole wash. We have a nice big deep single basin sink. When we need two sections we just put a tub in here and then we've got two section sink or we can wash larger stuff. And we have our wonderful reverse osmosis system which every house should have in the entire United States. Up above we chose to do these cute little LED lighting uh, for the kitchen lights. We control it with a switch, but when they're off, you can't really see them. When they're on, they create this nice glow, especially at light. We have our little tap on lights for over the counter and then over the stove, the vent hood has a light. And then we have our full size refrigerator. And back over here, Still showing itself because there's no door over it. We have our instant on hot water heater from Rheem. One thing I spent a lot of time researching was countertop materials. And we decided on butcher block countertops because they are natural and they're easy to refinish if they get scratched or damaged. And they're fairly low maintenance. You just have to keep them oiled. And they've held up really well. We've been very happy with them. We also chose solid wood flooring for the floor. And we put a one coat oil and stain combination on it so that we could just touch it up if it got damaged and it's also completely natural and healthy and safe. And this is our staircase which also doubles as our pantry, clothes storage, and other miscellaneous items like shoes and gardening equipment and whatnot. This entire thing is made out of the pure bond plywood just like the cabinets um, from Home Depot. It's a formaldehyde free or at least no added synthetic formaldehyde free uh, plywood, which is super important. Almost everything in this entire house is formaldehyde free. This little hallway leads right to a rather spacious bathroom. We have a uh, small tub here. Rather than a standard 60 inch household tub, we have a 48, I believe, inch tub, which means that you can still sit down and fit pretty well inside of it. We also have vanity mirror, custom built cabinet and sink, toilet. All in all, it's spacious enough that if you're washing the kids, you can like sit down here and still have access or shower, stand up. Um, it's as big as a bathroom needs to be. And so we're very happy with it. It served us well. This is our laundry room, which makes up this awkward little hallway here, which serves as a great sound barrier to our bedroom. But we have a propane dryer, and washer, front loaders, they use less electricity, window, and a little bit other stuff. 
This is our bedroom with a pocket door. Come on in and I'll show you around. This is a nine by nine room, which is very spacious. We've got a queen bed in here, Daniel's crib, a rocker, some storage. We still need to add some more, rearrange some things, but we're very happy with the space. We've got two windows which open up to give us a cross breeze and I'm six foot and yet uh, the ceiling's still plenty high for me. So once again, this is lit at night just with the string lighting because you don't really want a lot of bright light in here. This is one of our favorite areas because it provides a lot of utility for the house. A lot of tiny houses don't have room for projects and this loft is big enough for all of our projects. We have desks up here for computer work, for kids to do projects on. We have sewing space, cupboard, storage, and we have plans for a second bedroom. When we, as the kids get older, you're gonna need uh, a second bedroom for the kids. And so this right here can be walled off into a bedroom. It's designed for future expansion. Um, but right now we just have it as a loft area with an extra bed for napping or something if one of us wanna come up here and take a nap. We have lots of windows up here so that we can easily ventilate the whole house in the summer. As the heat rises, we open these up and it leaves the house and it creates a nice cross breeze. Tiny houses being so thin easily allow the wind to move right through the house, which is really nice. This is the extra play area that we will eventually have for our kids when they get a little bit older or we have people come over. It's got this nice uh, metal fencing all the way along. So even if they bounce into it, they're not gonna go anywhere or fall downstairs. Uh, once we finish downsizing and organizing, this space will be clear and able for playing or whatever and yet parents downstairs can still hear and listen and make sure everyone's okay. Even though David and I created the basic layout and design for this house and spent a lot of time researching the materials, this wasn't a project we tackled by ourselves. No, if it wasn't for my brother, this wouldn't have been built. Him and I together spent about four months building this house and it was a lot of work, but thankfully he's an expert builder and carpenter. So even though we had a lot of custom requests, he knew how to do it and he took the lead. This house is about nine and a half feet wide, almost 40 feet long, and 16 and a half feet off the ground to the very top. It's a big house, so because it's so large, you can't just move it with any truck. It weighs about 24,000 pounds, so in order to move it, we had to get on Craigslist and find people with some bigger rigs and cargo insurance that could pull it for us. In addition, if you're going to go beyond eight and a half feet wide and 13 and a half feet tall, or 14 feet here in Texas, you're gonna need a permit. Since we don't move this house very often, we built it to live in, we don't mind paying the extra $60 to get a permit just to move it around the state. Because our tiny house is larger than most tiny houses, and because we have full-size appliances, a washer and dryer, pretty much a full-size bathroom, and most of the amenities you have in a regular house, living tiny hasn't been hard. I think the main challenge is that because it's a smaller space, it gets messy a lot faster. Especially with the